Hey guys, it's Dr. Fields from Xtrades, and this video is going to be going over how to properly use my EMA Cloud Indicator that I'm going to be putting up on Self X Hub shortly after this video comes out. If you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free just to message me in chat or privately message me, or a friend request me, it doesn't really matter, I'll get them answered. Alright, so I'm going to be going over how to specifically use it on certain time frames and what to really look for on how to make the most for your profits per se. So we're gonna start with the five minute, followed by the 15, followed by the four, along with the daily, and then possibly the one hour as well, just because I wanna get some technical analysis out the way. All right, so let's see. So to begin with, for the email cloud, when it's on a downward move like this, and these dots right here are red, and it's just continuing downwards, one or two things can happen. It's either we will retest it eventually, like this, we will retest the cloud, and then we will reject, like so. And this right here would have been a perfect scalping opportunity. The moment that you saw this wick get sold off at the open, and it got sold off below these orbs right here, the selling pressure break, that means that the sellers are fully in control at the time because they don't even want the bulls anywhere near the cloud right now. Same thing. Didn't even this time this candle didn't even enter the cloud. It was just pure selling and this happened for three more candles right here So after this one three red candles down every single one touched the cloud rejected didn't even enter the cloud anymore and Then we would come down here get a small bounce Come back test reject test reject and then a full rejection all the way down to our 393.50 and that is is generally how you would like to play your puts. You would like to look for rejections right here. If you would look to go and enter puts, I suggest trying to enter them when it's below the cloud like this. If it's momentum that has already been bearish to begin with like this, more than likely it's hard for bulls to break through without any support bounces. So, well, critical support bounces anyway. For example, 393.50, this is where it made the difference. This is where we actually got a decent bounce, hit the cloud again, rejected, but we never made a higher low. We never made a lower low, my bet. So no lower low, that means that more than likely this next candle is gonna be shooting upwards into the cloud because that means that buyers are starting to step in now. They bought this wick all the way back up almost to fully engulf it and this right here was the confirmation so these candles right here were the confirmation it's also when these orbs turned green these orbs turned green when these turn green it means buyers are stepping in and if it's more than five candles that are just full green one after another it's highly likely that you may need a scale into calls because the momentum shifting to the upside now and that's what happened and look right here. So we had our apex right here and then it just converged. We had a huge candle upwards with the converge. And then we had a slight sell off into right here, but this time we never broke below the cloud. Whenever you look for puts when the cloud is already right here and the price action is already above it, it's kind of hard to play puts just because you're basically betting on the cloud breaking down. And for the entire day, we tested it, but we never broke down below the cloud. We never even once entered the cloud and stayed under. This candle didn't even count just because of the fact that it never stayed. It got bought right back up and then just went even higher. And this is what happened all throughout the day. So what my piece of advice for you is draw your levels out, your supports, your resistances, and then you're going to have to use those to support your thesis on if you should play calls or puts, not if just if the clouds this or that. It's always good to enter with conviction when you have support. Me personally, I never really played anything until right here. This is where I really picked up my calls and I just took a bet on it and said that, you know what, if we don't make a higher, if we don't make a lower low and we don't make a lower day, new low day, that's my stop loss. But we never, we got close, but we never did. And then this right here, 
is what happened throughout the rest of the day. And my calls easily exploded from probably 300, 400, 500 percent if I had held them that long. But I never really hold those call checks anywhere. I take 20 percent profits and just leave. All right. So let's go to the 15. 15 minute, as you can tell, same thing. It's a much more broader picture and you can see what's happening. And you can also see this wick right here. You can see where we touched it and we got bought right back up and we got the candle itself pretty much just was stuck in, was stagnating. And then the next 15 minute candle, we actually made uh, no new low day. And that was the conviction we needed for the bulls to keep coming in. No new low day after selling pressure like that in the morning means that bulls are probably coming back now. And more times than not, that's what happens. Bears had their opportunity to push us below this 393.50, but they never did, which is bullish conviction. It's just bullish consolidation then because they don't have the selling pressure to push us below this critical support. So it's a good idea just to keep that in mind rather than play puts because we did warn this in chat as well today that you shouldn't chase puts or anything until our critical supports are broken or else you're going to get your face ripped off. And that's what happened today. A lot of people probably went into puts today and just had their absolute faces ripped off just because of this candle right here. Just because of these candles right here, easily had your face ripped off. So just please be mindful when you're using this indicator, especially when momentum changes because this indicator is very accurate on when momentum does change. So if you already have conviction in something, if the indicator itself says otherwise, it's very good to at least consider or hedge yourself because the indicator itself is very accurate in terms of momentum. All right, and then let's switch to the four hour. So you can see right here, four hour, we did break below the cloud right here, but again, it meant nothing because of the fact that we touched major support and bounced. Heavily bullish move by the bulls. And after that, next four hour candles just pushed us even higher. And our control point for the bulls, in my opinion, is 400.50. This right here is critical. We need to hold this level for more upside. The more we reject this level, the more likely I'm inclined to believe that there's a bigger pullback coming because this is where the bullish momentum really kicks in. We reject it harshly at 402.50. If we can hold above right here, there's a good chance we can retest this and break out higher. Because if you look on the daily chart, you can see that we are consistently making higher highs and higher lows. See right here, this right here is going to be the higher low. We got another one right here, higher low, higher high, higher high right here. And then this next one right here is going to be the higher low. And this is going to be our back test that we just did. Now, what I would like to see is we would like to see 400.50 closing above for 2.50, breaking above that, and then followed by 405.50 and then 410 ultimately, which is this supply zone I have right here that we instantly rejected and just crashed right afterwards. And just to give some more bullish conviction for tomorrow, because I do want to point this out. I'm more bullish now just because the fact that this wick right here was instantly bought back up at support. And then this next wick was a major bearish bullish engulfing candle. And then after that, we just continued higher. We engulfed the entire last candle almost entirely to continue higher. And that just signifies buy pressure is still here. I'd love to think that this downtrend line is going to possibly reject again for the 
for God knows how many times, there is an opportunity that Bulls could actually push us above and retest 410 again. And only time will tell if that 410 will actually reject or not. Especially if we have more data coming out that's decent. But obviously this all can be invalidated with that FOMC meeting and everything. We could go up 10, down 10, doesn't really matter to me. But it's always good to keep this in mind as well. I used to be pretty bearish in my opinion, but bulls actually have the upper hand right now. It looks like they're really trying to get a blow off top right here. And this is what I would consider a pressure cooker top. I did call that out one time in chat today. And the pressure cooker top is when we have multiple wicks around the same level, around the same price, and we just stagnate around that area. And then we just end up exploding out with volume. And that's what happened today. We were underneath our cloud for a little bit for our pressure cooker, and we were just stagnating at our cloud for a little bit. And then all of a sudden we had our massive wicks all the way up to 400. So it's always good to keep that in mind. But besides that, that's really all I have to say about the indicator. It's very simple to use. Um, and let's see. And for these right here, these are more so just for you to look at. These, in my opinion, aren't super accurate, in my opinion. opinion. But you do get the gist of it, especially on the four hour time frame. The stop loss area for shorts is this is right around actually 400.50. So it is already programmed to know which areas are key pivots to begin with. I don't personally use it too much because I draw all my own lines. But if you want to cross reference it with any of your trades by looking at these, go ahead. Optimal trader entrance area. These are just optimal areas for you to enter in terms of calls or puts. Obviously stop loss area for shorts. Shorts do not want us above here. So obviously this will be our stop loss area. If you're in puts, for calls, anything below 397.27 is bad just because of the fact that we're going to be entering the cloud again on the shorter time frames, and we're going to be most likely testing this 393.50 again. And take profit area signal candles are just kind of there on both ends usually. Right now it's not active session, so you won't see it on both ends, but right now you're going to see it on the top right here. And this is because we're shifting more into bullish because we're already closing above this right here. And that's really about it. Besides that, thank you guys for listening. If you guys have any questions about this indicator, just give me a message and then I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And it was great talking with you guys.